السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته رحب بحضراتكم ورحب بالدكتوره فرح استاذ مساعد في الجامعه الالمانيه في الاردن حاصله على الماجستير في تصميم الموافر للطاقه ودكتوراه في الراحه الحراريه وتحكم في بيئه المكاتب الداخليه وان شاء الله محاضره ممتعه في مجال الاستدامه وجزاكم الله خير الله يكرمك دكتور شكرا كثير يعطيكم العافيه Thank you very much, uh, actually, for the organization group for inviting me. And I, I would like to thank the audience uh, for attending or uh, their interest in attending this lecture. So I will talk about sustainability, thermal comfort, and personal control. Let's start with the sustainability. So I think you are familiar with uh, this term sustainability. It's a very uh, um, becoming very important topic for construction research and also in all the other um, sections, not also in the construction uh, level. It's a multidimensional topic involving social, economic and environmental aspects. So the sustainable construction, which is related to our uh, sector, related to the architecture, civil engineering, and so on, it refers to the application of principles of sustainable development uh, in the construction industry. One of the most common definition of sustainable development is introduced by the World Commission on, Envir in, on Environment and Development. So, and it's um that the humanity has the ability to make development sustainable to ensure that it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs this is the most common um definition of sustainability on the different sectors but when we are talking about sustainable construction uh, one of the detailed definition of it related to uh, Rainsford, it's um, as the set of processes by which uh, competitive industry delivers built assist buildings, structures, supporting infrastructure, and their immediate surroundings, which enhance the quality of life and offer customer satisfaction. The customer satisfaction is really very important as it's a key of a successful uh, design. Um, sustainability must actually offer flexibility and the potential to cater uh, for user changes in the future because all the sustainable uh, strategies actually they are planned for uh, long term uh, over a period of um, 10 years, 30 years and it's, it's not on the short term. So it should be flexible. Um, yeah, and also to provide and support the natural and social environments and maximize the efficient use of resources. Of course, here we are talking about the green uh, energy sources, such as the solar and the winds. So the main aspect or main dimensions, they are related to economic, social and environments. When we are talking about social, it's the enforced improving the quality of human life, seeking fair distribution of the benefits of construction, uh, economic, the main thing actually is to maintain high and stable levels of economic growth and support the local economy. And talking about the environmental, it's uh, conserve the energy, the water, the land, the materials, and consider the renewable, uh, green, and clean energy sources. So in order to achieve all these goals, um, several codes, green building systems, um, locally and regionally, internationally were developed. In Jordan, we have codes related to energy efficiency, such as the energy efficiency building codes, solar energy code, thermal insulation, and the green building guideline. And LEED, it's very common, it's international, internationally um, common and you know, all over for, uh, and it stands for the leadership in energy and environmental design. It's internationally recognized uh, green buildings uh, or a green building certification system. Um, I would like just to talk about the lead a little bit as um, it includes these categories. In order to have a lead certificate, you have to earn points in, a, in, each, uh, in each category. And at the end, you will get um, 
one of these four levels of leads. So let's concentrate actually on the sustainable sites, how to choose the site from the beginning, um, the location between the site and the uh, local uh, public transportation, and also how creative the design is, um, the use of water efficiency and um, re the recycling of the water, uh, using of green and uh, clean energy sources such as the sun and the wind and um, using of um, healthy materials uh, in the indoor environment and also the recycling of the materials. Talking about the indoor environment quality, here we are addressing the thermal comforts, which I will uh, introduce later on. And um, a very important thing related to the categories also related to, to the lead is uh, raising awareness and education. <clears throat> it's not just uh, applying the requirements, <clears throat> but they are responsible to encourage others to go in this direction and uh, to show how <clears throat> they save the energy uh, in order that uh, the people they will go for these strategies and also allow the researchers to conduct um, <clears throat> field surveys, research researches, uh, in the buildings after the construction in order to um, um, learn and from the um, <clears throat> construction process and um, evaluate if it works well or not. <clears throat> so um, the lead has actually uh, four levels, which is the certified silver and gold and uh, platinum, which is the highest when earning 80 plus points. I would like to have some example case studies um, here in Jordan for uh, LEED certified buildings. Uh, the first actually um, building to be awarded the gold LEED, and it's not in Jordan, but in the Eastern Mediterranean region is the WHO, the World Health Organization. Um, it occupies an area of around um, 2,500 square meters, which was designed by Ingecon, and the total floor area is uh, 500, around 500 square meters. Um, this building um, was um, so they uh, they have the, they had the lead in 2011, and <clears throat> they improved the energy efficiency by uh, around 23 percent and saving the water by 60%. And it's worth, um, it's worth mentioning actually that now they uh, reached around 80% saving for the energy efficiency because they, uh, they are using more solar panels to produce uh, electricity. Here, I would like just to, <clears throat> to show you the categories uh, related to the lead. So as we said that the lead has all these categories and uh, there, there are sub uh, dimensions or sub, um, yeah, sub points in each category. This is an example of the indoor environment quality. Uh, the building earned 12 points out of 15. So they were able actually to um, increase the ventilation through the windows, uh, even the doors, outdoor doors, and using low emitting materials for the painting, for the coatings and the carpets, uh, so for the pavements. Um, they, uh, the daylighting, it was um, it's something um, very important and they were able to achieve that in most of the offices. Um, also, they used, they used the shading devices internally and uh, exterior also shading devices. So in general, the working atmosphere inside the building, it's healthy and um, very friendly. The second, uh, the second building I would like to mention also, it's a LEED certified, a gold LEED certified building in Jordan. It's the Middle East Insurance Company. Uh, it's the second building in Jordan after the WHO that uh, got the LEED uh, cert certification. And uh, what I would like to mention about um, 
this building that it was really um, it's not about so they achieved very high, very high quality of the indoor um, healthy environments but also the design of it from the outside as you can notice that it, res um, it respects all the surrounding uh, there's a harmony within the building heights the heights um, or the facades or the heights are graduated this is um, actually the architect written Faris Bukhain considered the, um, the height of the buildings on um, on this street or this facade as this, most of the build of uh, the houses they are just uh, maximum three or four floors um, height while on the other side of the um, uh, of the streets um, there are some um, tall buildings. So um, the building respects the surrounding, there's a harmony with it, even the um, using of materials uh, as shading devices that's uh, mesh um, and the stone, it's the local um, material to build in Jordan. So it's um, it's about the design they and they um, they were able to achieve a very high points related to the this category innovation and design. Um, in addition to the other categories. Also, they have very high performance in human and environmental health, sustainable site development. Uh, they are um, saving water and using energy efficient materials. 20% um, of the materials were manufactured uh, regionally, mainly in uh, Jordan and Palestine. So they used also the gray water reuse and rain water harvesting. Uh, which allowed them to reduce the landscape or the water used in the landscape by 50%. <clears throat> and, sorry. <clears throat> and having a reduction of 40% uh, in the indoor water use. Also, 50% um, uh, reduction in waste waste water generation and they are so making recycling for the water using it in the irrigation and um, uh, toilet flushing uh, for cleaning and so on and here is you can see the interior um, of the um, offices uh, they are well ventilated all the windows they are operable they can open it and close it um, upon their um, needs also, they have shipping devices internally and externally. One of the examples um, of, of the buildings is that Marji headquarter building. Um, that was, um, they uh, achieved the requirements related to the Jordan Green Building Guide. And as you can see in the, um, in the picture, they use the solar panels uh, in the facade. Uh, for, um, of course, um, using the solar panel to introduce, to produce the electricity and also the energy for the building um, and as shedding devices, um, as well as the vertical shedding devices you can see on the west, uh, west facades, um, green roofs, using of green walls um, to decrease the heating and cooling demands of the building. So they um, integrated a lot, a lot of um, sustainable solutions. Um, I would like just to go briefly uh, through some of the design strategies that we have to consider when we are designing um, energy efficient buildings. The first thing is about how to uh, choose your site carefully. Uh, if you are building a new uh, a new building, uh, as um, yeah, it's very important to be um, close to the uh, commercial, uh, religious, uh, and uh, schools, bakeries, banks. So, in order to reduce the CO two emission for the transportation, stay close to the public transportation. Uh, reduce the building footprint uh, in Jordan, according to the regulation, that's 25% um, um, of the total site area um, is allowed to be uh, built in the urban areas and 40% uh, of the total site area in the sub-urbans. -ur sub 
this is will allow us to drop the surrounding temperature, reduce air and heat island effects, and uh, reduce surface water runoff. In addition to enjoy the nature, as um, to have greenery, as we are um, in Amman, especially, we lack the uh, open spaces and uh, the greenery or parks and so on. So it's really important to have um, such developments in order to have healthier um, environments. In addition uh, to the rainwater harvesting, it's one of the most uh, one of the very important strategies, especially in our region because we don't have a lot of um, rainfall um, and um, uh, in the desert also. So it's um, our responsibility to collect that water uh, for during the rainwater harvesting or through the rainwater harvesting and use it uh, later on for irrigation, cleaning and flushing the toilets. Using materials, uh, using the open grid pavements, uh, such as the materials that allows um, water infiltrate through the surface um, and into the soil. This is will reduce the surface uh, water runoff and reduce the flooding. Uh, um, we faced in Amman uh, some flooding um, during the last last year. So this infrastructure um, choosing of materials will help to reduce such effects. Also, talking about other design strategies is understanding the climate. Understanding the climate is actually the key, the most important um, and initial step to consider when you are designing energy efficient buildings. Um, it differs. You have to understand all the details uh, related to the, um, uh, to the site. It differs between different areas um, within the same country and, of course, from country to, to another. So um, this example is related also to Amman. Um, it's very important to prevent the sunlight um, entering the building uh, in the summer because it uh, reduces the um, um, so it causes it reduces the cooling loads, um, and we can do that actually by. Um, uh, having the right uh, shedding devices as the sun uh, angle in Jordan, the sun is very high in the sky and the angle it reaches uh, 80, um, 82 uh, degrees. So um, in summer, this angle um, should be considered when designing the width of the horizontal shedding device. And the angle in winter, it's around uh, 35 degree. So um, it allows the um, solar, um, uh, solar energy to enter the house. So um, these, uh, these angles, they are very important to consider when designing the shading devices. Um, for the south, for the south facade, it's very easy actually to control um, the solar axis as the um, angles they are um, perpendiculars and very easy we can easy to pluck it but uh, in the east and west facades the um, uh, solar axis or the sun it's very intense and more difficult to control because of that um, we have to use a vertical shooting devices or actually in combination between vertical and horizontal um, to control the solar axis, uh, we can benefit from the trees. Uh, trees can help in shading our building. Uh, so using the deciduous trees can block up to 85% of the sun's radiation in summer. In winter, when the leaves drop, um, they allow up to 70% of sun's energy to pass. So as shown in, this, um, in these two graphs, and it's very uh, cheap and um, easy to apply just to have the correct deciduous trees. Um, and also the green roofs. So the green roof is a system that uses vegetation as a roof cover. The um, implementation, by implementation actually of the green roof, 17% um, of the heating and cooling energy demands can be reduced. 
and it's um, a very good percentage. Um, also, the U value, as most of the buildings in Jordan, they are not well insulated. Uh, so having the um, higher U value, um, it's, it means that it's less insulation and more heat loss. We have to consider reaching lower U values. So for more insulation in order to have less heat, uh, heat loss. Uh, nowadays, we are uh, building such as the graph on the right, left side, but um, it's very important to reach um, low uh, number of U value, and we can reach easily um, 0.15 watts um, per meter square Kelvin by having 5 to 10% insulation material. And this is will reduce the cooling and heating loads for the end demand energy. Um, these were some of the design strategies we have to consider when designing energy efficient buildings. And now I would like to go um, or to switch to the thermal comfort. So thermal comfort is a very important topic in the research uh, in order to achieve a comfortable indoor environments. The um, internationally accepted definition related to the ASHRI, it's the Asso American um, Association for um, Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning. Um, it's, um, the definition is the condition of mind which expresses satisfaction with the thermal environments, but this definition is a definition with the years or um, yeah, they has uh, has been subjective actually or subject to severe criticisms because the condition of minds it's not that clear, which could be the consequence of either a process of perception or a state of knowledge or a common feeling or attitude based on psychological point of view. So we can actually define the thermal comfort um, or suggested it was suggested by by me to define the thermal comfort as it's is influenced by individual differences, which are affected by physical, physiological, psychological, cultural, and social factors, among others. As a result, there is no absolute value of thermal comfort, but it's, it will be relative to comfort zone uh, within the surrounding thermal environments, which depends on the individual's experience and expectations, as well as the thermal climates. It's very important to mention that the range of uh, comfortable temperatures, it uh, differs between um, one person to another and also differs between the different climates, different countries. So, and there is no absolute just correct number. Um, it's a range of uh, temperatures that we have to achieve, achieve inside the buildings in order to achieve a um, high percentage of satisfaction for all the users. So why the thermal comfort is important? Um, actually, it del delivers satisfactory conditions for occupants, and this is the aim of any design, to, um, to deliver the satisfaction for the users, because if the users, they are not satisfied, they are not satisfied uh, it means that it's um, not a good or successful design. Um, it allows us to control the energy consumption and reduce the heating and cooling demands. It's uh, proposed and set standards for such thermal circumstances. The advantages of it also increasing the opportunity of personal control. I will talk about personal control at the end and improving the internal air quality, achieving energy savings and reducing the CO2 production, which is a responsibility for all of us nowadays, enhancing the efficiency of building occupants and improving uh, the uh, or changing actually the standards. Um, to enrich the uh, indoor thermal comfort, comfort comfortability. Uh, the thermal comfort parameters, we can divide them into two main categories, which are the environmental vari variables and the personal parameters. The environmental variables, uh, they are uh, air temperature, radiant temperature, air velocity, and humidity and um, we can measure them. And the other two personal parameters, they are the clothing, insulation, and measurable grids. Usually we are collecting this data uh, through 
questionnaires and um, or even just observation in the field. Um, in the field, when we are conducting the different um, research inside the buildings um, surveys. These are the instruments uh, we are using in the research of thermal comfort to measure the um, air temperature, humidity, the um, air velocity, and the radiant temperature. They differ between the different plants and uh, also the accuracy of them. But um, it's important to use them in order to understand the um, indoor environments and then relate that um, to the results of the questionnaire because you are asking the persons if they are satisfied, not satisfied, feeling comfortable or not. So um, after measuring the indoor temperature, you can know that when they answered comfortable, that was in the range of, uh, for example, 20 to 28 uh, degrees. And they uh, had um, very discomfort when the temperature was very low or very high. And these ranges of temperatures, they, are, uh, they differ actually from one country to another. It depends on the experience, on the expectations of the users. Uh, the personal parameters, they are related to the metabolic rate and the clothing. Uh, so uh, metabolic rate, um, it's when the person is sleeping, it's around uh, 2.8. And during the jogging, it's, um, it's 8. And relaxing, it's 1 minute because we are producing energy uh, actually when we are um, having um, heavy activities. And this is also influence our uh, comfort or discomfort inside the building. The other thing uh, related to the uh, clothing. So um, um, we have to collect also this data because at the end we have to consider uh, all these dimensions um, and enter them into equations, uh, mathematical and phys physical one in order to, re to reach the uh, range of uh, comfortable um, temperature. This is one of the examples of uh, the models, but I will skip it now because it differs actually uh, between one country to another and within the same country from um, one season to another season, we have to um, set ranges of uh, comfort temperature according to the different seasons as these factors they are changeable and you can't have um, so you will feel for example uh, comfort in um, different range between uh, winter and summer because of all the conditions they are uh, different about personal control um, one personal control, it's a very new topic uh, in research. It's, um, um, it's relating to um, involving, to involve the users actually to set their own um, needs, their own comfort zones, uh, because it differs from one person to another. Um, one of the most famous and uh, successful definition of personal control is for uh, Helvig, which is having the opportunity to adjust occupants' indoor environments according to their needs and preferences in the case of discomfort. When occupants have the knowledge of their ability to change the surrounding indoor environment according their, uh, to their previous experience, they will be more confid uh, confident in the potential to become comfortable in their indoor spaces if discomfort should occur. So the personal control, um, it's, um, it has three, three parts or divided into three categories, the available control and exercise and perceived. So available control, it um, relates or refer to the availability of the control options. When we are talking about control uh, opportunities or control options, um, example of that is the window when you can op operable window. If the window you can open it or close it in order to change the temperature, the indoor environment, um, yeah, conditions. Also the interior and exterior doors because you can change the um, um, 
ventilation through these uh, adaptive opportunities, blinds, of course, to block the solar um, yeah, um, access, and personal fans, personal heaters, thermostats, when you are adjusting the thermostat for the ACs, um, so, and choosing uh, a specific set point temperature. So you add more, these are the available control options. Exercise control, um, it refers to the frequency, to the uh, relative frequency with which the building users engage in indoor environmental adaptive behaviors. So how, uh, how many times did you open the window, close it, or open the doors, um, in the in indoor and outdoor doors in order to change the um, interior environment and to achieve, of course, the comfort, because usually you will um, have this uh, exercise control when you feel discomfort. And the perceived control is psychological aspects of the personal control, because it refers to the degree to which building users believe they can cause desired changes in the indoor environment. I would uh, relate to one of the studies um, conducted in Jordan. Um, so as I said in the, when we are talking about thermal component and personal control, we have to conduct and gather information and data through the different seasons from spring, summer, autumn, and winter, because in Jordan we have these um, four seasons. In some countries it's, um, it's enough to have just uh, data in winter and summer because they don't have uh, spring and autumn or um, these, uh, the length of these seasons, it's very um, short. So um, usually the, um, um, we are doing the measurements using the instruments I, I showed before and collecting the data, if they use it, they are comfortable or not comfortable, or the perception of the users, um, uh, and also the questions related to the personal control through uh, questionnaires, uh, written or um, digital questionnaires, during taking the measurements, so we can relate the measurements to the answers of each uh, user. And um, in this um, study, uh, we collected around uh, 700 questionnaires and 119 uh, persons were involved in three buildings. Um, and these buildings, um, they are the first two, uh, they are the LEED uh, certified buildings in Jordan, which I introduced at the beginning. And the third one, it's naturally ventilated and possibly cooled traditional building um, related to um, uh, an architect, very fam famous architect in, in Amman, Faru Yamur. Um, and um, so, the case study where the case studies were um, conducted in these buildings. Uh, here, I would like just to uh, mention that the adaptive controls they are the windows, the blinds, the thermostats, the interior doors and exterior doors, personal fans, heaters, and the thermostat. What we are addressing and um, in the questionnaires, it's related to the perceived availability. So the perceived availability is a subjective perception, is the subjective opinion. It's the belief of having or not having act actually the control option. And the um, question related to that is, do you have these options in order to control the indoor climate? When we are talking about desired control, it's the wish uh, for control options. It's um, to adjust the entire environment. It's your wish to have operable windows in your workplace or in your home, or clients or thermostats. Um, some persons, they prefer the natural ventilation and um, so the windows and others, they are relating on relying on uh, the active systems. So it's about the desired control. Um, the relationship actually between these uh, desired control, perceived control, and the availability of the control options, um, they are 
categorized or defined in consistence, consistency and conformity of expectations. Consistency is the relation between the objective availability of the control options and the perceived availability of these control options. And the conformity, it's the relation between the perceived availability and the desired control in order just to have clear understanding of that. So talking about the uh, consistency between consistency between the perceived and objective availability, um, we can de divide that into three categories, the restrictions, consistency, and false positive assumption. Restrictions uh, means that the users, they are facing problems actually, or restrictions in using the, um, the windows, the doors, the available uh, control opportunities. Um, that means maybe the, the window is available, but um, they, can, you, oh, they can't open it, or um, it's not reachable. Um, or several persons, they are sharing the same space, and because of that, they can't, uh, even if it's available, they can't open it, uh, open it, because they have to negotiate, negotiate that with others before uh, making this action. So um, the availability of the control option doesn't mean that you can use it. And uh, because of that, here we have the restrictions. Consistency, if you have the control option and you can perceive, perceive availability of it. So in this case, um, it's, there's a consistency between the real um, physical um, availability of the, um, of the control options and you're per perceived of that. And the false positive assumption actually when the users, they are answering that they have control over that control option, but it's not available in their um, offices or homes. And this, uh, it's very important case also because it means that that control option is not important for these people or they didn't try to use it before. Talking about the conformity, so uh, we can also divide it into three categories, which are the negative non-conformity, conformity, and the positive non-conformity. The negative non-conformity, it's uh, when you, you wish to have a control option, such as a variable window, but you don't have it in your uh, office or in your home. So, um, or you wish to have the um, AC, but you don't have that AC to control your indoor environments. In this case, it's negative conformity when you wish to have that control option and you have it. And positive, positive non-conformity uh, when the building uh, offers more control options more than desired. So the, um, uh, the users, they don't uh, prefer to have heaters and um, fans, uh, thermostats, but the building has all these options. Um, when we are talking about also exercise control, it's very important uh, that it's not just the um, physical uh, availability of them, but the um, psychological, psychological aspects um, plays a very important role because sometimes you are you want to make an action, but you can't do it because um, you have, especially if you are sharing the same space with other persons, so you have to ask them if you want to uh, open that control option, close it, or even um, leave it as is. Um, so this is related to exercise control. The reasons for not exercising the available adaptive controls, even that if the users, they are dissatisfied or um, not feeling comfortable, sometimes it's um, it relates to uh, no success expected. And in this category, we are talking about um, previous uh, experience. So um, if you tried uh, to switch on the thermostats um, and you didn't reach the comfort zone, you are willing or wishing to have it, um, a long, a very uh, long time. So then uh, within the time you will stop use, uh, using that, um, that control option or the thermostat or the windows um, because your previous experience was very bad. 
Um, no need to change. If you're feeling comfortable, usually you will not make any, um, any change um, or to adjust, switch on, switch off uh, the control options. Not important for some uh, person that they can work or sit in all environments. So it doesn't matter if it's um, they are feeling discomfort, but they will not make any action. So it's a personal psychological um, aspect. Uh, usually that um, no, most of the people, uh, if they didn't make any action because they, 73% uh, of them, they are feeling comfortable. The um, uh, second category related to no success expected if they had a bad experience, so they will stop using that control option and it's not important, it's the least uh, important or uh, reason for not exercising any available control. At the end, uh, I'd, I would like to, to show you an example of one of um, the buildings um, or the running projects nowadays in Jordan. Uh, it's a family center in Marka. It will be renovated. Um, it's, it has, it's a small building, has a small library, um, computer labs, and, um, and a garden for the children for the community, to help the community actually. And um, it's a cooperation between um, Germany and Jordan. It's a team from Amman and the um, Dresden, the team from Amman in, involves uh, persons from the Amman, Greater Amman Municipality and the German Jordan University. My colleague Tala is working also on this project. So this is the, um, designed, um, so maybe just to remember, this is the uh, real or the current situation. And uh, this is the, um, the aim or the design after uh, finishing the construction. Uh, so the, actually the traditional architecture concepts uh, are combined within the modern elements. The old and the new buildings uh, will be renovated and built in such a way that they are documents and new energy standards for Jordan. And the main uh, task and the main thing of that is to um, uh, achieve a thermal comfort, a very um, healthy, a comfortable atmosphere without using uh, air conditioning. It's just um, natural ventilation and uh, without any active system, active, um, um, active system. So the project, the red one is the uh, addition and the new parts because the project enlarging the family center. Uh, and the um, old one is the gray one in um, the gray color. This is the end, uh, the end effect um, by combining the old and the new to have more classes, to have the courtyard. Actually, the main point of uh, this shape is to um, create or to have a courtyard in the middle because the courtyard is one of the most um, efficient uh, design, energy efficient solutions. Um, in order to reduce the energy consumption. And um, here you can see also the E1. E1 is uh, one of the um, very important and uh, traditional parts of the traditional um, Arabian houses. So um, usually it's in the north, uh, it's shaded, it um, provides very uh, comfortable atmosphere. And um, here uh, you can use the concept because to maintain um, good um, ventilation, the using of uh, wind towers. So we have four, um, four wind towers uh, to control uh, the, circulation, the air circulation. And uh, the panels or the roof, um, they are responsible to produce um, the energy for the electricity. Um, in the, um, not only in the building, but also for the, um, uh, for the garden or the, uh, the park. And also to provide shaded uh, when the people, they are using the roof. So these are the facades. Um, they are uh, 
respecting the traditional um, facades, uh, using Mushrabiya also to um, as trading devices. And that's just um, an example of the projects. And thank you very much for listening. جزاكم الله كل خير يا دكتوره على المحاضره القيمه استاذنك لو ناخد بس الاسئله من الناس لو حد عنده اي اسئله شوري لو اي حد عنده اي اسئله يقدر يفتح المايك ما حد عنده سؤال الله يكرمك <تصفيق> هل هل في انظمه للاستدامه موجوده في الاردن زي يعني منافسه للليد والبريم؟ وي هاف ذا انرجي اه في فعليا انرجي افشنت كود ات هاز اولسو يعني ريكوايرمنتس لايك ذا ليدز بس وذ ريسبكت للوكال لوكال كلايمت سو يس وي هاف بس المشكله بهاي الجايد لاينز انه هي مش اجباريه So when you apply it, تقدر تأخد على incentives, بس مش إجباري to إنك تحقق كل هاي requirements. طيب لو لو أنا قدام فرصة مثلاً إن أنا أعمل مبنى بالاستدامة بالأفكار دي كلها, بس المالك مش عايز يدفع فلوس على موضوع الشهادة. يعني المالك مش عايز يأخذ شهادة ليد, بس لو عايز يحط أفكار تصمية, فده ممكن. يعني أنا أعمل تصميم لو أنا عايز أعمل تصميم للمبنى أوه. سواء معماري أو قاهرة ميكانيكال بأفكار الليد بس أنا مش ناوي أخد شهادة ليد فهل ده هيبقى صح ولا غلط؟ يعني يوجوالي لأنه أنت محقق هاي requirements فـ it's better to have the lead the lead it's a good uh, certification but um, على long run فأنت رح تلاحظ إنه قد في uh, reducing of the energy use فـ it's um, having the certificate or not uh, بالنهاية you have the benefit of reducing ال um, ال energy used in the building uh, برضه كل ال loads على ال cooling and heating Um, the certificate it's just um, يعني certified prestigious ممكن or um, you can use it for advertisements commercial um, things um, but achieving all these things هو فعليا رح ينعكس على satisfaction in the building uh, بتوفير الطاقة كمان طيب في مهندس مدني بيسأل هل المهندس المدني ليه أي دور في موضوع الاستدامة أو موضوع الليد ولا هو خاص بالعمارة بس؟ لا طبعا هي عبارة عن integration approach holistic approach يعني هو عبارة عن موضوع بضم كل ال يعني المهندسين المعماريين ال civic engineers الميكانيكال لأن الميكانيكال كمان بيشتغلوا على أنظمة ال cooling وال heating كيف إنها تكون energy efficient حتى مثلا lighting فأكيد ال civic يعني civic engineering engineers إلهم دور كثير مهم بتحقيق ال requirements. تمام دكتور جزاكم الله كل خير. لو في حد عنده اي سؤال ثاني؟ لا الحمد لله تمام جزاكم الله كل خير يا دكتور الف شكر لحضرتك. شكرا شكرا يعطيكم العافيه. شكرا. يسلم يسلم.